Welcome to the Bar Exam Toolbox Podcast. Today we are talking about the California Bar's decision to outsource the drafting of the 2025 Bar Exam to Kaplan. Your Bar Exam Toolbox hosts are Allison Monahan and Lee Burgess, that's me. We're here to demystify the Bar Exam experience so you can study effectively, stay sane, and hopefully pass and move on with your life. We're the co-creators of the Law School Toolbox, the Bar Exam Toolbox, and the career-related website, Career Dicta. Allison also runs the Girl's Guide to Law School. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review on your favorite listening app and check out our sister podcast, the Law School Toolbox Podcast. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us via the contact form on barexamtoolbox.com, and we'd love to hear from you. And with that, let's get started. Welcome back to the Bar Exam Toolbox podcast. Today, we're talking about California's recent decision to outsource the development of part of the next bar exam to Kaplan. So, fun times, Lee, huh? Oh my gosh. Can we just talk about how I was on vacation when this news broke? And I kind of missed it because I was on vacation. And then somebody sent us a note about it. And I had a moment where I really kind of heard the record skip, you know, and you're like, what? It's happening. Rur, rur. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that doesn't compute. Even with my vacation brain, that does not compute. All right. Well, for a recap, for those who are not yet familiar about this insanity, here is what is going on in California. Well, the California bar says it's running out of money, kind of per usual, but more so than normal, apparently. They want to get into remote testing at test centers. The NCBE, who writes the standard bar exam, particularly the MBE, which is the most relevant piece we'll talk about today, won't let them do that for probably fairly obvious reasons. Also, the NCBE is phasing out the MBE, which California uses, but not until 2028. So what did California do? Looking at all of these things, they decided uh, in early August to have Kaplan who is, of course, not a test writing company, write them a new test, which, fair enough, by 2028, they're going to need this new test. However, they're planning to give the new multiple choice section, wait for it, in February, which poses a few problems. Lee, what are some of these problems? Oh, my gosh. There are so many problems. I don't even know exactly (laughs) where to start. Well, let's start with the fact that we have students who are studying for this test already, whether they're foreign trained attorneys or people who are studying part time or took the last administration off. People are now prepping for a test that hasn't been written yet. And we don't exactly know what it looks like at all. I mean, I guess we know what the essays look like, sort of. Well, those are not changing, to be fair, right now. They will change eventually. For for like the next test, at least, we're only talking about the multiple choice. So right now, if you're going to practice your essays, your PTs, you're good. You can keep doing that. Yeah. Now, multiple choice, though, as we know, it's very hard to write multiple choice questions. (laughs) We have done this exercise, and it is not easy. I kind of find it hysterical that that's what they decided to start with. It's like, oh, we're going to just write 200 multiple choice questions. Yeah. All of which take a long time if you do them yourself. I don't know. Maybe ChatGPT can just write them. But maybe. We'll get into this. Maybe a few copyright issues all around with all of that. But yeah, yeah, these are not easy to write. And the other thing is they're not easy to test and validate. I mean, no test just writes a question and uses it the next week. That's not really how this works. No, I mean, this is why the NCB always includes experimental questions. As part of every administration, they are testing questions for validity before they include them on the test. Also, you need to mix up the questions. You can't just have the same 200 questions set and be like, Oh, we'll just do that in February and then we'll like mix up the order and do it in July. I mean, people are going to start memorizing them. That's a terrible idea. Is that what they're going to do? They don't say. I mean, oh my <laughs> gosh, it makes me really anxious. I think we're not alone. Everyone is like, what the mm, about this? <laughs> uh, it's just a family friendly podcast. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> Really, seriously, like WTF, like there's so many things about this that just are frankly kind of insane. Like 
do we even know how the next test will be administered? Is it going to be at a test center? Are you going to have to go in person? Like, we don't even have that basic information right now. What about people with accommodations? What sort of testing center are they going to take their test at? Is it going to be at these testing centers? Where are these testing centers? Where are they? What are they? I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I remember back when I took the GRE, like a long time ago, I just went to like a local neighborhood testing center yeah. and I sat down and took it and it was adaptive. They gave me harder questions if I got them right, that kind of thing. So I think that ultimately is the goal, which again, like fair enough, if you can figure out how to make that work when everybody needs to do it kind of at the same time or the questions are going to be leaking out. But I just don't see we're doing this in literally a few months. They're like saying in the fall, they're going to release some samples. That's way too late for this. People are going to find out they failed and then suddenly they're supposed to be taking this whole different thing. Because either it's basically the same thing, in which case they're probably infringing the copyright of the existing NCBE questions, which is a whole separate issue we'll get to in a little while, or it's not the same thing, in which case WTF, what are people supposed to do to prepare in literally a matter of a few weeks, basically? I know. And then I also feel that some bar takers are going to probably also file lawsuits about this. I mean, I don't know what the grounds right. would be, but there could be <laughs> reliance, discrimination. They didn't validate the tests. I don't know, but I feel that some attorneys are sitting down and making a list of possible claims because yeah. this just doesn't sound right to me. In my no, advanced other, legal knowledge. No, the other kind of fun aspect of it is Kaplan has to get out of the market, obviously, for test prep in California. But like people have already signed up, presumably, to use their stuff. Are they just going to get a refund and like, oh, sorry, you have to go to some other company now? I mean, the whole thing, it's just beyond. It is really bizarre. And why, why, why do you have to do it right now? I understand that the bar is running out of money. I mean, I don't because I'm still licensed by the California bar and my bar dues are a fortune. So, right. <laughs> as you know, at least because <laughs> you see my bar bills. But well, at least you get to actually be an attorney. I'm inactive and I still pay like half of what you pay for literally nothing. True. That's true. That's nothing. true. I think maybe they offer me like life insurance policies. That's it. Well, at least you don't have to do your CLE, which is coming up for me. And I'm going to be even more salty about doing all my CLE and then paying those bills because the bar can't manage its own money and make good choices. On our work chats, our Slack channel, we've had some discussions about this when the news came out. When I got back from vacation and was like, wait, what? What? Like, what has been happening? And I feel like it's a universal confusion. Everybody believes this is a terrible idea and no one sees how this is going to go well. This really feels like other kind of debacle type things that the bar has done, like say a number of years ago, releasing the subjects that were going to be tested on the exam on accident or all the other mistakes that they've made. It just seems like I don't know why they would want to create such instability so quickly. They had till 2028. Yeah, I feel like we're kind of seeing, what is it, Fry Fest plus California Bar, or whatever. I don't even know what to call it. All combined into one really poor set of decision making. It also has the feel to me of like somebody's on the golf course who happens to work for the bar, who's on their buddy's golf trip with somebody from Kaplan, who's totally like, oh man, no, we can like disrupt the bar, man. This AI stuff, chat GPT, yeah, we can totally just knock this out for you, man. And then they went back and signed a contract. Yeah, for what was it, eight point something million? On yeah. one hand, that's a lot of money. But on the other hand, that's a lot cheaper than administering the bar. Like, how much money are you spending administering the bar? <laughs> I mean, that's a separate question that maybe we mm -hmm. should take up with other people. But yeah, it does not feel very well thought out. I really feel no. for the people who are trying to navigate this situation because if we're flipping out, what are they being someone who's planning to like take the bar exam in a few months? I mean, literally the next exam is like if you're taking the bar again and you're taking this exam and this exam does not even conceptually exist right now. Yeah, I mean, results come out in November. We're recording this in late August. So November is not that far away when you look at the calendar. Yes, it still feels like summer outside. But as my daughter was remembering, Halloween is coming. November is going to be here before we know it. And 
we are hoping that we have some examples and then we're just supposed to study off of the old framework. I mean, the whole thing just feels so uncertain and really chaotic and unnecessarily so. It's like not a surprise that the bar is in money trouble. I've seen press releases about that for years and years of like, oh, oh, the bar is still running out of money. We're trying to make cuts. (laughs) Okay, that's fine. But it's not like it was a surprise this year that it got a lot worse. But yeah, it just doesn't feel well thought out. And what is the board of directors of the bar doing? Like, do they remember what it's like to study for these tests? I don't understand. I honestly feel like it's even more chaotic than it was during COVID, which at least there, there was an excuse and a reason, but it was also super chaotic for people and very, very challenging to revamp how you're thinking about the test and where you're taking it. We had to do a whole podcast on like, how do you take the test if you don't have access to write something down? We don't even know in February what that's going to look like. I know. Then you also think about the added stress of all of those folks who are going to sit for the bar and then they have to figure out how to curve it. I mean, that's the other thing. Like everyone's going to take it and they're going to be like, well, we just see what happens i mean <laughs> I I think, yeah i think actually that's kind of what it is like oh well we'll just figure out how to scale it after we give it because that's what i'm saying yeah. like there's literally no time to validate any of this it's not like you can go out and test some questions with a bar population it's the next exam they just signed the contract like two weeks ago yeah it's really if weird that. so we know that kaplan is writing questions even though they are not a test writing company. I also took the GRE on a desktop computer back in the day. We probably took it around the same time. I remember that, but like that's not how the bar works. You just can't roll in on any given Tuesday to sit for the bar exam. So they have, still have to come up with these test centers. And then like there might be litigation. Literally <laughs> the press releases are referring to the fact that they're probably going to get sued and that there are indemnification pl- clauses and limits on legal liability. In the actual contract, I think it's probably fair to say that no one on any side of this believes that they have resolved the copyright problems. So basically, the issue is the only winners in this whole thing are whatever big law firm the state bar and Kaplan have hired to consult on this potential litigation and probably represent them when they get sued. Maybe some potential class action attorneys who are licking their chops at this. But then again, who pays out when they lose? Oh, probably the bar if they lose it. And that's us. Right. Which is not fun. I hope they have insurance. Oh, no. Uh, The whole thing is so stressful. (laughs) Okay. Well, this feels like one of those COVID podcasts we did back in the day. I know, where we're just (laughs) like, what? what? is going on here we just don't know what to tell you we just don't know what to tell you well i guess the thing is you got to just like accept the chaos because here's the thing no individual student has any power to get the bar to change their mind i don't think i think you're just at the whim of the bar the law schools are going to be like upset and talking to the bar the bar doesn't care what we say but like they're going to get feedback i'm sure But they've signed this contract, so they're probably going forward with it. So you have to decide what you're going to do if you're sitting for a bar in 2025. You got to focus on what you can control, which not much. So then you go with what you said earlier about what do we know? We know that the essays and the performance tests are probably going to stay the same. You can focus on those and there will be multiple choice. So still practicing multiple choice questions is probably still a good thing to do, especially if that's an area of concern for you, which it is an area of concern for so many students. Right. I mean, I think at this point, there aren't going to be any real practice questions. I mean, they might hand out a few, but I think you just have to assume they're going to be similar to the MBE questions and use a tool for that. I literally Mm -hmm. don't know what else you would do. Because like we said, Mm -hmm. it's hard to write these. No one who does MBE prep specifically is going to be writing their own because what would they write them based on? They've never seen them. Right. Right. They've never seen them. And I think the thing is, even within prep companies, some people find that U World MBE questions feel slightly different from Adaptive Bar MBE questions, which feel slightly different from Barbary MBE questions. They don't all feel the same because they were written by different teams of people <laughs> with different right. parameters. So we're not going to know exactly what those questions look like. I can't remember how many licensed MBE questions we have, but we have quite a bundle. I mean, maybe we're getting 10. I doubt 
we're going to get very many. I think we're going to get a taste. And then everyone right. who's sitting for these tests are going to be the guinea pigs. Right. I mean, hopefully they release something saying what content's even going to be on it. I mean, are you just to assume that they're using the same exact content that's on the MBE subject matter outline? I don't, I don't know. know. That's cool. It's so fun to not know. I also, if they I'm... are, are, isn't that kind of stealing? I don't know. Not legal advice, know. but just a curiosity. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. And not just spread rumors, but I feel like back in the day, Kaplan got in trouble for copyright infringements with the NCE. Mm, maybe. I had this memory. But... It was a long time ago, like back in the early days of us working together. But when they were doing PMBR, which was their mm. like MBE, that some of their questions got a little too close for comfort. Right. But that could be yeah. my bad memory. But it's very shady because you're trying to write questions that mimic the real questions. I mean, it's going to be very hard. Do you feed them all into like chat GPT and then just be like, oh, well, we edited them a little bit. I would be concerned about that if I was the NCB's copyright lawyer. I mean, I haven't read our contract with them recently, but I'm pretty sure that would not be allowed. I feel like that's not allowed. I think we aren't even supposed to edit those questions at all. I think we're supposed to leave them as is. And say we license them. I'm pretty sure that's what, right. that's what it says. I mean, we licensed them a while ago and I haven't read the contracts, but I I feel like it says something like that. Like, don't mess with our yeah. questions. You, you can kind of assume it would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is that the law schools have to be freaking out because bar pass rates are such a huge big deal, especially in California for California law schools. I would say that if you have already graduated and maybe you're a retaker for one of these 2025 administrations, maybe circle back with your bar support office. Make sure you're on some sort of mailing list. See what they're offering because they should be front lines for getting some of this information and kind of dispensing it to everybody. But if you're not in school, you just want to make sure you're still getting communications from your school. So that's one of the things I would think about if I'm not actively in my law school anymore. I need to figure out how the law school is going to tell me what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, I agree with that. Basically, if you are taking one of these tests, you need to keep your eyes out for the prep materials that they say are coming at some point in the fall. Hopefully that's sooner rather than later. We'll see. I mean, the fall um, is quite a long season, as I was discussing this is. with my six-year-olds. Yes, today. Yeah. Arguably, it could start in a week and change from when we're recording this on September 1, or maybe not. You know, are we going by the lunar calendar? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. At some point, some materials will likely appear. You should probably look at them. I think the schools hopefully are going to be having as much information as they can possibly get and obviously talking to whoever they can talk to. But the whole thing is just such a ridiculous mess at this point, let's be honest. Yeah, I guess you just have to go into it with this idea that you have to play the hand that you're dealt. This is kind of a crummy hand. So you just have to do the best with it and know that they are probably going to curve it all and everyone's in the same boat. That's the good yeah. news. The only thing I was thinking, I was like, maybe they won't even get around to writing all 200 questions and you'll get a shorter test. Something like that could happen. Maybe. I mean, who knows? We've all been in these meetings with high level people who are just like, yeah, we can do that. Totally. You know, you and I have definitely been in some of these meetings where it's like, that would be so easy. And then the people who actually do the work show up and are like, actually, that's a lot harder like, than you think. Yeah, this is actually like really hard. There are like people who do PhDs and things like validating tests. And there's a whole process. There's some best practices. Best practices probably not give the test six months or less after you sign a contract. <laughs> I mean, guessing that's not and a best people, practice. No, and people litigate over the SATs. I just feel like this is also right for issues of discrimination. That's why you're supposed to validate these tests to try and minimize these things. I mean, is that part of the indemnity like, litigation clauses? I don't know. No, I think they just cover the IP, actually, from oh. the limited information we saw. What could possibly go wrong possibly? with a bunch of lawyers involved? I mean, just look at the next gen exam. People think that's moving too fast in certain ways. They have been working on that for literally years, and it is not even coming out for another several years, a couple of years now at this point. And even now, people are freaking out because they're like, you're supposed to give this in, what, two years now, and we don't even yeah. have a full exam? That's still two years away. They've got, like, pretty decent samples. It's not like the next test. And they're trying to 
calibrate them and give the test so people can write answers so they can see what people are doing with them. One of the things they're doing is getting groups of people together and giving them these tests. That's what they're doing. They've had meetings and committees and all kinds of stuff. They're having discussions about what the content is and fighting over it and then coming back together and then having another list. You can't do that in a few months. No. Also, they're having webinars for law schools and people who work in test prep. And they're doing interviews with folks like us to talk about it. They're out to educate everyone. And this is not saying I think the NCBE does everything right because I I don't. But I'm just (laughs) saying that that is what they're doing, which is what you do when you write a new test. I just don't understand it. I don't know. It's it's all very anxiety inducing. It is. It is. But again, back to what we control, what we don't control. I know. <laughs> it's true. We do not control what the California bar does. If anyone no. has not learned that yet, yeah. they just do things and people react to them. I just feel badly for the people who are trying to have some sort of orderly preparation period and know that they needed more time and they thought they were doing the right thing by maybe skipping the last test and waiting till February. Now they are in a world of chaos. Yeah. However, I will say that if you have struggled with multiple choice questions, working on any multiple choice questions is probably still a good idea because even though they're not going to be the same, many people struggle with time management or getting distracted by answer choices or not carefully reading the facts. I mean, there are so many things that we find that folks do struggle with that are going to translate across tests. So at least you know that if you are focusing, especially on these execution pieces of the MBE, that is going to translate. Because even if it's on a different subject, I mean, let's not even go there, but let's say it's on community property. I don't know, maybe. You still need to have really good skills. Did that just make people more anxious? I just thought about I feel that. Like, I was like, they could be writing yeah. community property questions. What? I know. I feel like we're just going to assume that it's the same seven MBE topics, unless there's a way that could be infringing copyright. I feel like you could use the same material because that's like black letter law. It's not really copyrightable. I know, but what about those like study guides, the ones that do all the subjects and all the stuff that's covered? That's probably copyrighted. Yeah, I mean, people presumably will still buy stuff from the NCBE because I can't imagine that California is going to put out like a full subject matter outline of rules at this point. No, but then I think the easiest way to get around some of those copyrights would be to test the California specific subjects. But that would be total insanity. Let's face it, they have nothing Uh, to work off of with those. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) They don't even have a model for that. I was like, that would be like even more yeah. unfair than ever. But all these people who are going to find out in November that they didn't pass, they've got at that point a pretty limited time to study. And there's no way that you could just switch all of the multiple choice topics. That would be even more insane. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm giving I, a little more credit than is due here, but I'm like, surely not. Surely you wouldn't do this. I know. Yeah. I mean, this whole thing is pretty crazy. But I think the one thing I will say is that if somebody is listening to this and waiting for their bar results and is feeling like they might have really failed, not the type of I think I failed, like everybody gets a little anxious that they failed, but maybe something happens that really makes you think that you might have failed. I do think that if you're really worried about this new multiple choice question section, spending a little time brushing up on your performance tests while you're waiting for results. I'm not talking about like studying 20 hours a week. I'm talking about three hours on a Saturday or something like that, but just not losing some of those skills. So you could maybe spend a little more time on the multiple choice. That is one thing you could do. Not that you need to, but if you're really worried, you could use that type of an activity as an insurance policy. Yeah. It's all just so bizarre. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm so sorry. I didn't think this was a possibility. This wasn't on the the 2024 bingo card. No, it was not. It was not. I was so confused when I got the note while I was on vacation. I was like, what is this person talking about? Right. Ah. Well, it's kind Mm -hmm. of like what they did with a baby bar maybe like half a year, year ago, where suddenly they're like, oh, by the way, the whole test is multiple choice. Moving on. And everyone's like, wait, what? I know. Was this like under discussion? What's going on here? (laughs) Yeah. Same thing. And the baby bar is not just like a road to to licensure, but 
for some students, it's how they get back into law school when they've been academically dismissed. And so a lot is writing on the baby bar. And they're just like, we're going to change it. Sorry. Yeah, I feel like that's actually the most infuriating thing to me about this whole thing is these are actually people's lives and careers. And I feel like yeah. it's very disrespectful to just be like, oh, well, we're just changing everything and we're not providing you any information at all, but I'm sure it'll all work out. Good luck. Bye. And also give us a lot of money to take this test. I know. And then I also feel like you're going to end up with this chaotic situation of possible litigation. And then are they just going to wave people in? I mean, it's some of the same stuff we were talking about in 2020 with COVID. It's like, what yeah. are they going to do if this is a true disaster? And in that case, they didn't end up waving a bunch of folks in. But you know, they still had a test that was tested. Even writing these essay questions, they take forever to write these questions. They have to be considering to use AI to do this faster. I don't understand how they think that this is going to happen this fast. Which we've all seen mixed results with our explorations of the AI tools out there. Like, can I you know. make them write some questions? Sure. Is that question a great question? Maybe not. And I can't I imagine know. there are that many people who really want to sit around who don't already work for the NCB or something like that that want to sit around and write a bunch of these questions because it's really not a lot of fun. No. Ugh. Okay. Well, this was a stressful podcast. So okay. I think everybody needs to take a deep breath. Everybody needs to take a deep breath <laughs> and we'll get through this together. It figure is gonna it be out. Rocky, guys. We'll figure it out. We will keep sharing news once we hear it. I mean, who knows? But no more vacations for us. We just have to stay online and see what happens. <laughs> we'll keep talking about it. And I think everyone's just going to have to kind of hang in. It's a little bit like COVID. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but there will be some sort of a test. There'll be a chance for you to some get a license. Some people will pass. Some, some people, people will pass. Won't. <laughs> We're going to help you try to pass. A lot of other people are going to try and help you pass. Take some deep breaths. It's a good time to create a meditation practice. <laughs> yeah, get your self-care in order. Everybody, thanks for listening. For more, you can check out baregamtoolbox.com, which is full of helpful tips to help you prepare and stay sane, hopefully, as you study for the bar exam. You can also find out about our courses, workshops, and one-on-one -on -one tutoring programs to support you as you study for the UBE or California bar exams. We'll Put it on our email list too if you've got any updates, so sign up for that. If you enjoyed this episode of the Bar Exam Toolbox podcast, please take a second to leave a review and rating on your favorite listening app. We would really appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you're still in law school, you might want to check out our popular Law School Toolbox podcast as well. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to Lee or Allison at lee at baregamtoolbox.com or allison at baregamtoolbox.com. Or you can always contact us via our website contact form at barexamtoolbox.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon.